All right, YouTubers. So, bought a Polaris brush, great sled, 600, and uh, yeah, it was overheating. So, long story short, I went through the whole thing, chopped up the coolant, everything. The guy put a new top end on it and uh, did not bleed it from the bleeding screw which I'm about to show you. This is stuff you can do from home. Basically, when I popped open my thermostat, there wasn't one. So, my step was overheating like you wouldn't believe. But that's not causing the thermostat. That's causing non-bleeding it by this little bleeding screw that does come undone very easily. But there's a trick to doing this, and it will work for any player of snowmobile, whether it's a clean fire 800, 700, 600, of course a 900. Basically, what I had to do, obviously I put a thermostat in there. There was no thermostat. I put one in. I'm not into racing anymore. I want my sled to run and last and not be a bag of shit. And basically I would go about 100 feet and the thing would overheat and basically I'd have to shut it off or it would shut itself off. So... When you put your thermostat in here, you bolt this down, you tilt your sled forward. And the best way to say it is like, so this is your snowmobile here. You jack it up for your track to rotate. No, you want the front of the sled up like so. I will have another video showing you how to bleed it, but I'm just giving you a quick diagram. So you want the front of your sled up at least, at least so the track is higher than Sorry, so the nose is higher than the rear of the track, so about a foot and a half, two feet. You can do it in your snowmobile trailer, lifts, anything really. You can do it in your yard, drive it up the front of your snowmobile trailer on tilt, and there you go. So anyway, loosen this bleeding screw off. Motor does not need to be running. It needs to be off. You loosen that off with the screwdriver. As you can see, the previous owner of this 800 did a few uh, bleedings himself. And uh, clearly did not know how to use a socket. So anyway, you tilt your sled, like I said, nose back. Loosen the screw off. Fill your reservoir up. And you'll notice, you'll even hear it if you're, if you're quiet enough and it's quiet enough. You'll hear the air coming out. And then you'll start to see a bit of coolant come out here. You snug that down. It's like bleeding a brake. Snug it back down. Make sure everything's tight. Tighten that back down. Start to set up. Check for leaks. Make sure there's nothing coming out because sometimes, you know, it's always good to change a seal. They probably will come on a new stat. I didn't have to. My stat was new. So, anyway, I there's no stat in here right now. This is just an example. And, um, yeah. So, that's how you bleed coolant system on a Polaris snowmobile. Any clean fire, I believe from 2000 and let's say six to 2000 and 16, 17, maybe 18, probably 19. Um, basically why I'm making these videos is there's lack of videos on how to work on your snowmobile. And when I got a bill for $3,500 to fix my snowmobile, that's when I started making these videos. So we're starting it off basically simple bleed. Your, snow, your sled's overheating. You want to hope it's not your crank. Any snowmobile mechanic will pull your engine apart and tell you it's a crank. Because, of course, they want to make some money. And you know what? Yeah, maybe your horn gear's on its way. Maybe it's not. Not always the situation. Had I brought this to my local mechanic, I would have been into a full, completely rebuilding a motor. Tilt your sled forward. Loosen off. Tilt your sled back. Loosen the bleeder screw. You see some coolant come snug it down that's it now my rods were cold and my sled was running super hot since i've done that everything's been good let's knock on wood here that was wood and this is wood yeah we're just getting into these videos and then next step is going to be how to clean your exhaust valves i'm sure there's a couple out there and uh we're going to show you how to clean them quick and easy and nice and properly and uh, that's a service on a snowmobile. Basically, you bring it in. I'll show you how to change your crankcase. 
They clean your exhaust valves. They probably check your compression. If it's running, they probably won't unless they want to gouge you. And yeah, I can show you the stuff to look for. And um, if you want your sled to last, it's about as simple as this, what I've been doing with mine. The 600, I just blew up my eight. And I, I, I put an ounce of oil in my gasoline. One ounce of oil, synthetic, runs through good. And um, so far, so good. Um, next video we're going to show you how to check your reeds so if you do get into this check to see if there's any chips or cracks in your reeds these are v-force 3 reeds v-force 3 so when you're checking your reeds you want to check inside for cracks if your sled's running like crap you want to check your reeds v-force reeds are good i've never heard anybody say well i put v-force reeds on and i've gotten amazing amounts of power it's, um, I've had to rebuild my engine and I decided to go with V-Force Reeds. So, rule of thumb, as long as you can see over those two gaps, you're good. If you can see straight directly out, I mean like out of here, you've got some chips and cracks. Your sled will run like shit. Simple as that. This goes for the liberties also. Tilt your sled. So, we'll say this is your sled. You're going the opposite way. You're tilting it back on a Liberty 900. Yes, it's a laydown engine on this style. So like this, yeah, you'd be tilting your sled back. Thermostat, I can see it in there. Long story. Drain your coolant system if it's overheating. Bleed it because you never know if you're buying a used sled what the last guy did. And in my case, the last guy did the top end, which was nice, but. He did not bleed the coolant system, which led me to headaches and uh, doing my own service at the end of the day. Doing your own service isn't that bad of a thing because you know what? At least you know what you did. So, yeah. There you go.